CataractCoach.com quiz. What's the problem? Look carefully at this picture. This is an anonymous resident case. The patient has had a capsule rupture, and so we're going to plan on putting in a sulcus IOL. There's a three-piece acrylic lens being loaded into the injector. This is that butterfly type of injector. The lens looks good. Good orientation. And the haptics are in good position. Now we'll make sure that that leading haptic is in good uh, form so it goes inside the tunnel of the injector. There we go. Folding that looks pretty appropriate. Good folding of the lens. And then we'll place this in the sulcus. So this is a video sent in by an anonymous resident. And what I was most impressed with is the resident figures out that there's a problem and then saves the case. And that's important. And so here's the lens going in the injector. The lens looks great. Appropriate power, appropriate type of lens. A three-piece lens is good for the sulcus. And now we're going to zoom in here and get this lens inside the eye. We just sped up the video to 1.5 times speed just to get through the case a little faster. This is a, a sped up video. You can kind of tell that in the motions. So zooming back in on the case, there's a little bit of subincisional iris atrophy from during, during FACO here. There is a good sulcus area that's intact, a good intact capsulorexis, and any vitreous has been cleaned up. So there's a, a slight enlarging of the incision, which is helpful. I like that idea. And now the lens is going inside the eye. So injector tip in there, start to deliver the lens. And what's happening? You got to remember the 7L rule. First haptic should come out looking like a number 7. This one is not. So, okay, that's good. So, Red says, let me try the other way. Good, good clue that it wasn't the right direction. So, now getting it in. Careful not to damage the haptics. There you go. That first haptic goes in great. Now, that's the correct orientation. And deliver the lens more. And still, there's some confusion here. What's going on? Did it fold the right way? Uh oh, now look. Where's the trailing haptic? It's not in the correct way. The lens is upside down. That's the problem. So the lens is now going to be flipped. And you have to be careful here because flipping this can stir up more vitreous. It can scrape the endothelium. There can be issues here. But this lens, certainly, that trailing haptic is incorrect. That's the letter S. And we all know S is stupid. So flipping it over, I like this. Using the Sinsky through the side port, that's a nice maneuver. So great save there by the resident. Why is it so important to have the lens in the correct way instead of upside down, especially for a three-piece sulcus lens? Well, the answer is these three-piece lenses are not planar or flat. They're angulated. There's usually a 10-degree angulation between the haptics and the optic. And if you have it in the correct orientation, you angle the optic a little bit back posterior to the iris so there's still an acceptable gap there and you can have aqueous flowing around the edge of the eye well through the pupil if however you put the eye well in the eye backwards in other words upside down now the angulation is the wrong way and the eye well optic will be forced up against the back surface of the pupil of the iris and you'll get basically a pupillary block and so you definitely do not want this lens in upside down. So now the lens has been correctly positioned. The incision is being sealed up or hydrated, making sure that there's no vitreous incarceration here. The lens looks pretty well centered. I like the maneuver there. It's looking good. So important thing, the resident knew there was an issue at the beginning as the lens was going in and then saved the day when finally he realized the lens was in the eye upside down and we righted the ship. We correctly reoriented the lens. Now removing viscoelastic here. Be very careful in going behind the eye well here. You don't want to cause vitreous to come forwards. And then we can keep make sure that lens stays centered and nicely positioned in the ciliary sulcus. And so now removing the rest of the viscoelastic there. Everything was pretty good. A little bit of iris stranding there coming in the IA port. And that'll be of no concern. We can just let go of that. So room viscoelastic has been removed here. We'll finish up the case. And then in this case, a type of case like this where there's a complication, I would prefer a 10 nylon suture to seal the main incision. Not absolutely required, 
But to me, it's uh, just a little bit of an extra measure of safety in a complicated case. Remember, with a ruptured capsule, you have an increased risk of complications like CME, endophthalmitis, wound leak, etc. And then finally, the last step here, the surgeon is going to use um, a sponge to check the incisions, and make sure they're all sealed up. And though it's not really popular in America, in some countries we like to put an air bubble inside the anterior chamber at the end of these complicated cases. And sometimes even at the end of a routine case. So here's an air bubble going in. And this is just filtered room air. The air bubble does confirm that there is no vitreous prolapse. That looks great. And the pupil is nice and round. And finally ending with a little bit of subconjunctival medications. Again, putting some subconjunctival steroids and antibiotics can be helpful in these complicated cases. Thank you for watching.